ist Antidote schon statt Snow. MSNBC is a crack house for intravenous idiocy. This podcast is the common sense rehab. And now your leftist detox counselor, Brock Lawley. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brock Lawley. I am the atheist editor on YouTube. Thank you for listening to my podcast. Feel free to go. Beyond this, see my Facebook, my Twitter, my Tumblr, my YouTube page, where you will find imported Cuban and Dominican cigars amongst the Swiss or sweets, cheap, two-bit c- cigarettes smoking, and uh, you'll be thankful for it. I will class you up a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the feat before me today is going to be to try to start a revolution, a movement, if you will undermine one of the greatest myths perpetrated in our generation, and that is that liberalism, leftism, they're the good guys. That's the good guy way of thinking. Liberals, they're the good guys. You know what I mean? In every little two-bit movie, right, you got the good guys, you get the bad guys, and all that bad 70s cop drama, you got the good guys, you get the bad guys, you get the good cop, bad cop. The leftist world has done a wonderful job. Just, you know, a tip-your-hat kind of job. All standing ovations in perpetrating this magic trick, if you will, on the minds and hearts and generation um, that we live in now. But, But they're wrong. They're wrong. And they're wrong because the facts and the figures in every regard, and I mean what I say, Every single regard proves that they're wrong. And the reason that they're able to... The reason they're able to perpetrate this myth is because on its face, especially if all you do is let your ears ring with the rhetoric, it it looks very much like that. It looks like the conservatives are stingy misers. They're your grandparents' mothball thinking. Right? Right? And the left, you know, they're they're youthful, zealous, eyes on the clouds, moving forward, right? But when you actually look at the fallout of everything, you know what I mean? So so I'm gonna I'm gonna take you way back. Think think back to when you were in in high school. And if you're still in high school, well, you're probably experiencing this. You might not have the bird's eye view yet, but you're experiencing it. So back in high school, remember that guy who was you know, really, really, really self-confident, running his mouth uh, about how great he was all the time. You know, he was scoring with the ladies in high school and talking about his conquests, blah, 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 right? You might have known him to be some kind of football player or whatever. Well, what I discovered when I got out of high school was there was a guy in the corner. He was quiet. He didn't say much. He didn't say much at all, actually. And it wasn't so much that the guy wasn't popular. He wasn't not popular. He just coasted through high school with sort of an aloof way about him, right? Like like none of it touched him. Didn't make waves. Just looked like he was putting his time. The system said he had to get a diploma, so he was getting his diploma. Well, Jebel, he had years in life, and I, you know, through a series of experiences, but the main one was the military, where the guy that was running this yap, the guy who was... uh, puffing out his chest and telling you how great he was. When things tested him, realities tested him, for example. Maybe fear. Maybe he was sent to war with a bunch of other guys. You know who ended up being heroic? You know who ended up being all the things that the guy was talking about being? The quiet guy in the corner ended up actually being those things. He was made of the stuff. He stepped up. He delivered cashed the check and the windbag read all the young high school impressionable ladies tricked you remember him he was uh, he was crying in his grandfather's hanky riddled with fear useless to his entire his entire unit of comrades what you, whatever you want to call it this is a general analogy and that's much like life in the bigger picture too and I, I kind of extrapolated that to life in general, and I've noticed some patterns. That although the left does 
project the, the rhetoric with the best of them. If you just look, if you squint your eyes and you look a little closer, you know, it, like in other words, if you're looking at a magic trick, you know, where are the guys waving his hands? That's where he wants you to look, where the magic trick's always taking place somewhere else, right? That's, that's a very similar pattern with the left. Because if you look at the consequences, the ramifications, the fallout, if you look at what actually happens when what they say is done, you'll see broken homes, you'll see poverty, and stem it. You'll see father, fatherlessness, you'll see uh, young ladies who are nothing but sexual tokens to a, a young generation addicted to porn, no, no end in sight. You'll see bankruptcy where once you saw prosperity. You'll see a collection of, of power like only seen in the most horrific pages of history. Stalin, Pot, Mao, Hitler, patterns just emerging, elitism. Where, where, you, where you see them laud science, you'll see them rape science of their reputation. All for political aim. All to consolidate power. Where you see them talk about minorities and the downtrodden, the socioeconomically challenged, you'll see their plight only worsen. Only worsen. When these leftist ideas are implemented. Be impartial about it. Remove your emotions from it. Look at the stats. Look at the hard stats. Go to these inner cities where liberals run things. I guarantee you, you're going to find a nosedive. A steady nosedive of living standards. Now, yeah, you know, they're going to blame everybody else but the people in charge. And when you look at who was in charge during that nosedive, you're going to see liberals. You look at they're always talking about education, right? And how you, you need to just open up these fences, fields of education. And yet, if you look behind the veil, you'll see that education and the price of education has skyrocketed. Skyrocketed. Even as wages and, and careers are disappearing at alarming rates, college education has gone nowhere but up. And you look at who's in charge of that. You look at who's in bed with the government on that regard, and you're going to find liberals. They talked about how our health care was going to improve in, in, in a variety of ways. That if there was anybody who slipped through the gaps before, certainly that wouldn't happen now. But if you actually look at what's happening in your country, the elderly benefits are being slashed. Premium rates are through the roof. Healthcare has skyrocketed, and less people have it because employers are shifting full time workers to part time workers to comply with the mayhem of liberal policy. So, of course, not only are the uninsured now insured, but the people who were insured are now uninsured. On and on and on. This podcast simply does not allow room for me to lay out all the damage that these policies have implemented. So I'm going to tell you this, and I want you to spread this movement. It's all a big magic trick, leftism. They're not the good guys. They're the bad guys. You know, like in so many of these movies you see, where at first there's this ominous enemy. Dark, maybe he's underground, maybe there's a society above ground, and they seem to be so righteous. But as the plot moves forward, and as you see more plot points revealed as more cards are laid on the table this card game of life you'll see that those rebels, those people that were villainized they were actually pursuing the righteous cause sure the powerful, they made it seem one way but it wasn't that way at all and someday everybody's eye is going to be open it's a, it's a slow crawl right now there's a veneer and the They've kept that veneer. We're, we're, we're moving on the momentum of greatness, a great generation before us. But you can feel you can feel it slowing. You can feel the momentum slowing. And the ruse, it's, it's going to be made known. But by that point, it'll be ashes. It'll be your inheritance. And the perpetrators of that crime will have mobilized power, which, of course, was the per point all along. 
Awaken with me. Share with your friends. Liberals, leftism, it's not, it's not good. It's just clothed. It's clothed in Armani, but underneath that Armani is a sickly, anorexic, disease-ridden, intravenous drug addict who's willing to steal and rob and thieve and lie and do anything and everything to perpetrate its one goal, which is getting that fix, getting that fix, that feeling, which is power, which is elitism. It's always the goal. They're better. They believe their own lies. I want to start a movement. Expose them. They're not the good guys. The good guys are the ones that you've been trained to hate. The good guys are the ones that you've been manipulated to feel are your enemy, but they're not. They're not. They're fighting for opportunity. They're fighting for prosperity. They're fighting for opportunity for everybody. Equal opportunity. Rethink it. Look again. Thank you for listening to The Atheist Standard Show. Visit the Atheist Antidote YouTube channel and follow him on Facebook and Twitter.